Hello, my name is Monica Alejo and I'm a prevention specialist with SCANS Futuro Saludables YPS Web Program and today I will be providing you with a presentation on prescription drug abuse. Prescription drug abuse. So what is prescription drug abuse? A lot of people believe that prescription drug abuse is when you take pills with the intentions of getting high. Although that is one way one can abuse drugs, there are several other reasons why. So taking a medication that was not prescribed to you. When someone gets prescribed with a medication, the doctor takes their height, weight, and a medical history into consideration. So when I go to the doctor, they ask me, oh, are you taking any med medic medications at the moment? You know, and I, if I say yes or if I say no, you, that kind of affects what pills I can get prescribed because by then they have to see what pills can be taken with the ones I'm taking or if I'm not taking, well then maybe she needs a higher dosage. So if you come and you take my pills and let's say they have a high dosage, you know, you can end up overdosing because you might be a smaller person than me or let's say you're a bigger person and you decide to take two, but then what if two pills are too much? So this brings me to my next point. Purposefully taking the wrong dosage of a prescribed medication. There is no way of knowing how your body will react. You can, you know, overdose and that will lead to, you know, you end up ending up in the hospital, possible death. So... It's, it's not a good thing to do. Also taking a prescribed medication for something other than its intended purpose. So a lot of people like, oh, it, I have back pain. Oh, we'll take this pain medication that was prescribed for, you know, when I had knee pain. You know, just because it's for pain doesn't mean it should be taken. It's not for that purpose. It's not for that individual. So it shouldn't even be, you know, given. And also remember that prescription drug abuse can affect all age groups. Don't assume that just, you know, oh, I'm a teenager, I'm young, you know, I'm invincible. That's not how it works. It can affect every age group. So it be that you're young or that you're part of the older age group. Some of the most commonly abused prescription drugs. Opiates, which are used to treat pain, anti-anxiety medications and sedatives used to treat anxiety and sleep disorders, Stimulants used to treat ADHD and certain sleep disorders and over-the-counter cough suppressants. Cough suppressants actually became popular with teens for some time, and I'm pretty sure that it's still used to this day. They would use cough suppressant to make pain, so that would consist of cough suppressant, Sprite, and a Jolly Rancher. What they would do is they would mix it into a foam cup, but the cough suppressant, the color would actually leak through the foam cup, so that's when they started using two foam cups, which is known as double cupping. So this is when cops started picking up on that trend, you know, they're mixing it, they're using double cups. So in the streets, when they would, you know, drive around, that's how people would know that they were being, that they were using lean because they would use the double foam cup. So just because these are the commonly abused drugs doesn't mean that all the other pills are not being abused. All pills can be abused, all over-the-counter medications can be abused, so just keep out Keep an eye out for any type of prescription medication or over-the-counter, not necessarily just these specific types. Why teens abuse prescription drugs? So prescription drugs can be abused for a number of reasons. They can be simply because they want to feel good or they just want to get that simple high. Or it can be because they want to relax or to relieve some tension. But you have to keep in mind that there are healthy alternatives of releasing stress, you know. You can either go for a walk at the park, listen to music, or draw. It doesn't mean not necessarily like, oh, I have so much stress, let me go get high. No, it doesn't have to be that. You know, you can find a healthy outlet. Or it can be to experiment with the mental effects of the substance. A lot of teens, they tend to, you know, oh, let me take this pill to see how it makes me feel. And then they go tell their friends, oh, it made me feel like this. It made me do this. And it made, you know, they share their experience. So here's another teen listening to the conversation and they're like, well, you know, now I want to try, you know, I want to see what he's talking about. I want to feel those, you know, those feelings. So now they're going home and taking their own medications that their mom has, you know, to get that high, to get that experience. Or it can be to maintain an addiction and prevent withdrawal. You know, some individuals, you know, they start with, you know, smoking cigarettes and then drinking alcohol, you know, like with the gateway drugs and then marijuana. And then when that's not enough, you know, well, let me go ahead and start hitting, you know, like the harder drugs, you know, prescribed medication. And then when that's not enough, you know, they lead into the harder drugs, the cocaine, the heroin, 
So it can be simply just to maintain an addiction and, you know, not to go with that with, through that withdrawal stage. Or it can be to be accepted by peers, you know, peer pressure or to be social. You know, as I've mentioned, a lot of teens, you know, they're trying to figure out who they are. So it might be that they just want to fit in with the cool crowd. A lot of kids were like, well, they're doing it. Well, then I want to do it. And if I don't do it, then they're not going to want to be friends with me. So, you know, I might as well just, you know, go out there and pop a pill or something. So just because your peers are doing it or the cool kids are doing it, it doesn't mean that you have to as well. You know, it's not a passage. It's not a right of way. Or it can be to try and improve concentration, academic or work performance. We understand that during high school, you know, your junior and senior year, they're stressful. You want to get good grades. You want to get perfect scores on the SAT. You want to get into your future college, you know, your dream school. And we get that it can be stressful. And, you know, you have to stay up cramming all your exams, studying. But, you know, try to work out a schedule, you know, this day study this subject, this other day study this other subject, you know, kind of time you're studying. It doesn't have to be like, well, then let me take these pills because, you know, they're supposed to make me focus or they're supposed to help me with this. You know, you can, you know, space out your time, value it. Teens may also not see a great risk in trying prescription pain relievers without a doctor's prescription. A lot of teens assume like, oh, well, they're prescribed by a doctor. So these things shouldn't harm me because it's legal. So let me go ahead and take these drugs. I'll be fine. And that's it. And they also believe that prescription drugs are safer than street drugs and not addictive. So they assume that just because they're prescribed, they're much more safer. They assume that, oh, I'm not buying these pills off the street where they're mixed, you know, cleaning chemicals and all these other unknown things. And it's like, well, they're safe and not addictive because, you know, they're prescribed. They shouldn't be bad for the body. They shouldn't be addictive. But little do they know that they are addictive. Getting prescribed with medications can make you become addicted to those certain drugs. So imagine them not being described. They're just as harmful, even more unhealthy for you because they're not prescribed to you. So it doesn't make it any safer for you or for anyone to take if it's not prescribed or intended for them. Prescription drugs are much easier to attain than street drugs. So a lot of teens, they decide, you know, well, let me go ahead and get prescription pills because, you know, my mom has them sitting on her drawer. They have them in the restroom cabinet. You know, I can just go in, walk in, you know, mom, my head hurts. Let me get all these pills. She's not going to notice because, you know, I can go in there and just get them whenever I feel like it. So a lot of the time it's because they can just, you know, take them or it can be from a grandparent. You know, if grandparents like, oh, the grandma might be like, oh, can you bring me my pills? Let me go take them to you. But oh, while I'm at it, let me just take out a few because, you know, she's not going to notice. So that can be a reason why a teen might do prescription pills. So what are the risks? It can impair your motor skills. This can affect your ability to, you know, to run away from danger. So let's say you're high and you're walking down the street and you decide to cross the street and a car is coming your way. You won't be able to, you know, run back to the sidewalk as quickly as possible because, you know, it affects your judgment. You're not able to think you know, on the spot, like quickly, it slows you down. And it also affects the ability to learn. So this is what, you know, what you can call out the blackout. The next morning, let's say you wake up and you don't remember what happened the previous night. Well, it's because you didn't really remember anything, you know, it affected the ability to learn or that part of your brain where you can't remember anything. It also increases the risk of injury. So let's say it can be as small as, you know, I fell over and I scraped my knee. Or for example, let's say you decide to get high next to a pool because you were invited to a pool party and here you are next to the pool getting high. You know, you can end up falling into the pool and drowning. You know, you're not able to move quickly. You're not able to, you know, go oh, on drowning. You, you're not able to capture what is actually going on at the moment. You, you know, it can be a late reaction. Or it can also cause difficulty breathing and an increase in blood pressure. And this, as we all know, can cause for you to have blood clots and it can go up to your brain and this can cause, you know, a seizure. So it's not just, you know, oh, high blood pressure. It can, you know, become something much more severe than just that. It can also cause addiction and physical dependency. So let's say, you know, the prescription 
pills aren't longer enough and, you know, giving you that same high. You notice that you're, you're taking pills, like, instead of every few hours now, it's like every hour, every few minutes, you know, you don't get that same high that you first once did. So what are you going to do now? You're going to go and, you know, go look for, you know, the heroin, the cocaine, something that's much more stronger than what you're taking right now. And it can also cause, well, the physical dependency part, which is like, you know, I can't go on about my day. I can't function without, you know, taking the drug. So that's when you become dependent on it. You can accidentally overdose and or get uh, poisoning. So as I've mentioned, you know, they're prescribed to a certain individual with a certain height and weight. So let's say you're a petite person and you take your mom's pills, who is a little larger than you are, well, then you're going to overdose because, you know, it wasn't intended for your age group, your weight, your any of that. Or you can also have brain and other organ damage, you know, pills, your kidneys, it can affect, you know, your intestines, your insides, not just, you know, oh, I'm taking them and that's it. It can, your internal organs as well. And as I mentioned, it can cause seizures, you know, from the high blood pressure, the blood clot up to your brain. It can be damaging and, or you can also possibly face death, you know, part of the overdose. Let's say you overdose, but you don't make it back from that and just die. You know, it's something that you don't want to go through. It's not the risk you're willing to go through. Just remember that, you know, if you put yourself through any of this, you're also putting your family, your loved ones, your parents through this. Seeing you go through a seizure or possibly death, you know, it, it can be agonizing to them and can be pretty costly on their pocket. How does abusing prescription pills uh, affect the body? So it can affect the body in so many ways. It can affect its lungs, the stomach and intestines, the muscles and kidneys, liver, central nervous system, and the heart. So you're asking, well, how does it affect all of these things? So how does it affect the lungs? It affects the lungs because it suppresses the lungs' the ability to work properly. So if they slow down your lungs, you know, if you abuse suppressants, it slows down your breathing, and this in return can actually cause pneumonia. And then how does it affect the stomach and intestines? When you take prescription pills, they actually ca can cause constipation. So if you, if you abuse them at a, such a large amount for such a large period of time, it can actually cause you to become constipated and accumulate over time. So then you're going to have to end up in the hospital having to take laxatives, you know, to release what you had, you know, inside in your stomach and your intestines. And then how does it affect the muscles and kidneys? Um, when you lay for a long period of time, your muscles actually dissolve. So if you were to, you know, overdose or you were to collapse, you know, and you're there for various hours, your muscles can actually become to deteriorate. They can become deteriorating. And this in return releases chemicals, and these chemicals, you know, they end up in the kidneys, and this can end up causing kidney failure. And it also affects the liver because, you know, the liver is what processes everything that, you know, enters your body. So if you take so many pills or you take such a huge amount of dosage, it's going to go to your liver and it's going to end up there. So if you end up taking way much more than you should have, it can cause, you know, liver damage or liver failure. And how does it affect the central nervous system? So the nervous system gets affected because it actually depresses, depresses and slow down the brain's normal activity. So it can be deadly if abused or taken in large doses. And how does it affect the heart? So abusing prescription medication for such a long time actually puts strain on the heart. So if you take so many pills, what you can do is you can actually cause, you know, a heart attack, heart failure, or even death. So Pretty much most of these things, you know, it causes a chain reaction. So it'd be, oh, my, I get, you know, pneumonia. Pneumonia can end up killing you. Know. Any of these things that I mentioned, you know, it can end up in death. So none of this sounds like, you know, it's a positive thing. So please be aware that it does affect you, not just mentally, but also, you know, physically through the inside. And there's no way of knowing because you really can't see unless you end up at the hospital. So please, no pills. Don't abuse them stay healthy. A lot of people that I have come across are not actually aware of the fact that if you have someone else's prescription medication, it is actually illegal. It's illegal for you to carry something that is not prescribed to you. So if a cop stops you and he sees that, you know, you have medication in your hands, he can actually ask, you know, for a prescription. And if you don't have a prescription, well, then guess what? You know, there goes, you know, a fine, a ticket, prison time, jail time. As y'all can see in the screen, there's actually, like, most of them are considered misdemeanors and felonies. You know, there's more felonies on the list than 
misdemeanors, then you can see that there's prison time, you know, two to 10 years, up to a year, two to 20 years, you know, from days to years, and then the fine, you know, up to 10,000, 4,000, you know, and it's just, it just depends on how much and the severity and the type of drug that you actually have on you. What are some signs that someone might be abusing prescription drugs? So it can, there can be a decline in social activity. So let's say someone is taking pills, but they don't want to be seen by their friends, you know, because their friends aren't that type of people. They're the people that don't do drugs who are against drugs, but you might, the individual might be embarrassed to take drugs. So they might not want to go out or hang out with them as much. There can also be a sudden lack of motivation and interest. They might not want to, you know, go out in public. They don't want to do anything because their mind is on, oh, when am I going to be able to get, you know, that next high? When am I going to be able to sneak off and, you know, take the pills? There can also be a sudden change in behavior. Taking drugs actually, you know, alters the way that you think. You know, you can snap at anything. There can be, you know, like the smallest thing, you know, someone accidentally bumped your shoulder. You know, you're going to end up getting mad because it's something you're not, you can't control. And being on drugs just, you know, makes it that much worse. It can also enter a person, you know, into a depressed mode. And this can, you know, lead to an unusual lack of hygiene. So, you know, when people are depressed, they tend to, you know, stay in their room. They don't want to socialize. They don't want to go out. So what happens is, you know, they decide to stay in their room. They don't shower, brush their teeth. You know, they don't comb their hair because, you know, they've lost interest in themselves. And, you know, they might think, oh, no one's going to want me like this. No one loves me anymore because I've become this person, you know, now that I take pills, you know, I like to get high, you know, I might not be accepted by my loved ones anymore. So they might just, you know, enter this mood of depression and there's no way that they feel like they can't get out of it. What should you look for? So when you go around your house, you know, make sure that you're looking for missing pills, you know, go through your medicine bottles, make sure that there's none missing, if no one should be taking them, if they're not prescribed to a certain individual, you know, make sure that all the pills are still there. What you can do is, you know, write down in a paper how many pills are left. And after you've taken it or the person it's been prescribed to takes it, you know, update the list, you know, make sure that no pills go missing. Because then that can be, it can give it away that someone might be abusing prescription drugs. Also look for unfamiliar pills. You may assume like, oh, okay, maybe my son, daughter brought it back home because, you know, they were at their cousin's house and they let them have it because they might be feeling pain. But just remember that using someone else's prescribed medication is actually considered, you know, prescription drug abuse. So look out for that as well. Or you can also um, look for empty cough and cold medicine bottles or packages. You know, maybe your child left it behind to make it seem like a dummy, you know, like the medic medication is still there, but it can just be simply that it's empty because some pills you just can't see through the packaging. So make sure that, you know, you keep track of those as well. Your cough medicines, what you can do is after someone takes it, you know, like a cough suppressant, after someone takes it for a cold, you know, write down with a Sharpie a new line where the cough medicine is at and just keep updating it as often as you should after someone takes it. So like that, you can make sure that you're controlling what goes in and out of those bottles. So how can you help? This can be for both a teen and a parent, you know, communicate. If you know of a friend that's, you know, taking pills, you know, abusing them, talk to them. Or a parent, if you know that your child might be abusing pills, you know, communicate with them, you know, ask what's wrong. Are they having any problems? You know, let them know that there's someone out there, you know, counselors, teachers, you know, loved ones. It can be an older cousin, an older, older sibling, you know, someone who can provide them with that guidance and also have compassion. You know, if someone tells you, you know, I'm taking pills, you know, I'm stressing, homework has me stressed, you know, understand them, don't judge them, you know, if you get after, you know, your child, I mean, it can cause them to just turn around and go take more pills because they're going to feel like they're not, you know, loved by their parents. Or if it's a friend, you know, level with them, you know, like, oh, I know it can be stressful. We're both like in the same boat, but let them know that you're there for them. And if they need someone to talk to, you know, you're willing to go and take them, you know, so they can have that help. And also educate and intervene. If, you're, if the parent wants to educate their child on the dangers of prescription drug abuse, you know, educate them. Even if they're not taking pills, it can help them spread the word or it can help them for future purposes. Let's say they were thinking of doing drugs, you know, educating can, you know, bring them to light, you know, oh, I don't want to take pills now because now my parents have told me what can happen and I didn't know of that. 
And intervene, of course, as I've mentioned, you know, they're doing pills, you know, take them to get help, help them get the help that they want and that they deserve, you know. Just because they're taking pills, it doesn't make you a bad person, you know. You just need that extra push. So how can a parent or guardian help? You know, you can have a parent, you know, safeguard the medication or properly dispose of the medication. You can lock up your medicine cabinet. You, let's say you have a cabinet in the restroom that comes with a locking key. You know, just make sure that it's locked at all times. Or if you don't have that and you happen to have a safe, then you can go ahead and stick the medicine in there. It doesn't have to be a medicine cabinet. Or there's also cheaper alternatives online, you know. They have some boxes that were that are meant for medicine. You just, you know, toss it in there and it comes with a lock. Or if that's still, you know, out of your reach, then you can go ahead and just, you know, buy a simple chain and lock. And let's say you have a cabinet in the restroom or in the kitchen where you can go ahead and just chain the handles together, you know, and lock it. You can also do that as well. It doesn't have to be expensive, you know, just effective. Or you can also monitor the quantities of medications kept in your home. You know, as I mentioned before, Every time you take your pills or every time someone takes their pills, you know, their prescribed medication, go ahead and write down like the new quantity and make sure that you also keep track of, you know, your liquid medications. So it'd be regular cough medicine. Make sure that you keep writing it with a new Sharpie and also make sure that you go ahead and monitor your children while they take the medicine. You don't want them to end up overtaking the medicine or, you know, sneak some pills away. And also make sure that you dispose of expired or unused medications, you know. Some medications, they're just prescribed for that certain time, you know, last it, take it for two weeks or take it until the last pill is gone. You know, if it's just for two weeks, make sure that you drink those two weeks worth. And if you still have some extra ones, you know, make sure that you get rid of them, take them to a disposal site, you know, just out of reach to children. Because, you know, unused medication or if they're expired, you know, they have this diff different chemical in them now, you know, their compound changes, their composition. So there's not knowing how it's going to react to your body or if you're taking it with another medication, you don't know how they're going to react. So it can have a negative effect or something much more severe. You know, you don't want to end up you know, passing away because you took something that was expired and it had such a bad experience or a reaction with the other medication that it was taken with. So how to properly dispose of medication. Please do not flush unused medications down the toilet, down the drain or in the trash can. You know, if you end up flushing medications or putting them down the drain, they can potentially end up in our groundwater and end up in our drinking water. You know, we don't want to end up in taking those medications that everyone has to study, you know, to just to flush down the toilet. Or please don't put it in the trash can unless it says otherwise on the bottle. I know some medications can be thrown in the trash can, but if it doesn't say you can't, that, it, that you can't throw it in the trash can, then please do not put them in the trash can, you know, someone can get their hands on it, someone can just walk by and, you know, they see the medication just sitting there, you know, they can get their hands on it. Or, for example, let's say it's a windy day and there's strong winds and they knock over your trash can, you know, if someone decides to walk by and they see, you know, pills, they might, you know, get them or so it'd be an animal, they can end up eating it. We also provide disposal pouches. There are also some online. I know the community coalition here at SCAN gives out disposal pouches, but you can also find them online. It's a pouch that has some powdery substance in it. So what you do is, for example, they have one, a pouch that's for 10 pills, you know. So you put the 10 pills in there, you put some water, you close it, give it a quick shake, and then you toss it in the trash. And then there's some that you can put up to 90 pills. You, you put the 90 pills, again, you put water, close it, give it a quick shake, and then you toss it in the trash. And like this, they become deactivated, they no longer work, and no one can get their hands on it. And also take advantage of the DEA National Take Back events that they have. I know here in the in Laredo, the Community Coalition and the DEA work together. It's an event that takes place twice a year. And what they do is they collect unused or expired medications. So when that day comes, you know, you can, from here till then, you can accumulate all your pills into one bag. Make sure you take off all your personal information from the containers and, you know, you take it. You can also, if you decide, oh, let me go ahead and help out my family, you can go ahead and, you know, collect from everyone that you know that might have prescription medications. And no, the DA does not ask for information. They don't ask where you got those pills come from. So let's say you have like a huge batch because you decided to do this, you know, family collection. They won't ask you why 
such a big bag. And also, as I mentioned, remove all personal or identifiable information from the containers. You don't want your personal information, you know, to end up in someone else's hands. There are also some disposal sites. If you don't want to wait for the take back event that takes place every six months, you can go ahead and visit the Webb County Sheriff's Office or you can visit the Webb County Constable Precinct 2 or the Webb County Constable Precinct 4. So this program is available from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Here is the location and contact numbers in case you don't know where they're located or if you have any questions or if you want to ask about the timing, if they're still open. And also make sure that you go ahead and ask, you know, loved ones or relatives, you know, I'm going to one of these dropout sites. Do you want me to take some pills? You know, ask your grandparents or if it's your parents, have your parents ask their parents, you know, just so they can make a difference and not just, you know, make the trip for one person. They can go ahead and make it for several people. And of course, they don't get any questions asked. They don't have to mention anything. You know, you just go in there. I'm going to go drop off some pills. The lady will go ahead or the individual that works there will go ahead and escort you to the drop off box. You just drop off your pills and then they will send you on your way. We actually have a new disposal site at the Texas A&M International University Police Department located on 5201 University Boulevard. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and contact them at 956-326-2100. As you can see, this is how the medication disposal bot looks like at the TAMU Police Department. And if you can see at, the, at your right hand, the bottom right hand corner, you can see that it tells you what you can dispose and what you cannot dispose. So. Yes, medication, prescription medication, you know, they don't accept syringes or they don't even accept inhalers. So make sure that you keep in mind what is accepted and what is not. You know, if you know someone who's going to make a trip to Tammy U or, you know, if someone who attends Tammy, you know, maybe you can ask them, hey, can you go out there for me? There's many ways. Obviously, there's more sites. If you have any questions, then go ahead and contact them. You know, please be aware that they might be closed at certain times. So if you would like to give them a call beforehand just to make sure that you don't go out there and just make the trip. So here are a list of items that are accepted and not accepted at the disposal site. So items that are accepted are prescription medications, including narcotics, oxycodone, Vicodin, etc., medication for pets, medicated ointments or lotions, over-the-counter medications and vitamins. Items that are not accepted are needles, syringes, IV bags or bloody or infectious waste, personal care products, aerosol cans, hydrogen peroxide or other chemicals, EpiPens, iodine solutions, radioactive or mercury products, or empty containers. So they pretty much don't accept needles or items that can, you know, have your body fluids. But of course, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and contact the site of choice. And remember, you are not alone. There are other parents in similar situations. You know, if you know of another parent who's in the same situation, you know, go together to go find resources. Or you can also team up with schools, the community, and other parents to help battle prescription drug abuse among teens. You know, try to make a difference. You know, there's the community coalition who they gather once a month to, you know, battle underage drinking alcohol or drug abuse. Also take advantage of the numerous resources of information on the topic. There's a ton of them online. You know, we have some information here at SCAN. We do info booths, you know, we're out in the community trying to spread awareness and information. And also commit to making a difference and stick with it. If you attempt to make a difference and you don't stick with it, you know, it won't end up working out. But if you try to make a difference and make sure you stick with it so we can see the difference and feel the difference. So commonly asked questions that I frequently get are, do they ask for personal information when dropping off medication? As I've mentioned through my site, no, they do not ask for information. They don't ask for your name. They don't ask for your age, for your birthday, for your address, or where you got them, or how you got them, you know, what pharmacy or what person. None of that. It's all confidential. You just go, you drop off your pills. So it'd be at the drop-off sites, you know, you just go put it in the little box and then you're in and out. If it's at the DEA take back event, you just, you know, drive up, roll down your window, take out your little bag of pills or whatever you end up taking it in, you know, here are my pills, they'll take it, they'll dump it and you're gone. You just literally just hand it out your window. And then what if I don't have access to a drop off sites or a take back event? So what you can do is you can actually mix it with coffee grounds or kitty litter and dispose of it in the trash can. 
Mixing with coffee grounds or kitty litter actually makes the prescriptions less, you know, appealing to other individuals, you know, who's going to want pills, you know, in kitty litter. And this can actually help, you know, get rid of the medication much more in a proper way, something that can absorb the, you know, the pill. Then how can I prevent prescription drug abuse? So the way you can help prevent is maybe you can volunteer at some, you know, companies or organizations that, you know, they do events and it's like, oh, come and on information with us, you know, help spread the word. Or you can also donate to some organizations, like, for example, Scan, that they work with people who, you know, may have gone through that or that are, you know, trying to prevent the youth from actually abusing prescription medication. So you can just go ahead and volunteer or donate. donate and there's many more organizations, many more, you know, places where you can do that as well. Here are some resources that you may use if you feel like you want more information. These are some resources that we often hear use at SCAN to collect our information for our slideshows. And go ahead and use them. They're, of course, reliable resources. We also have some staff here at SCAN that you know can provide you with pamphlets or information via phone or email. So feel free to go ahead and check out these resources. Thank you for viewing SCAN's Futuros Saludables on prescription drug abuse. If you have any questions on prescription drug abuse, feel free to contact us at 956-724-3177 or visit one of these websites at jerkfree.org, cdc.org, or samsa.gov.